In this video, we'll show you two ways to send out an active campaign newsletter after they've gone through your initial nurturing or onboarding sequence so you can stay in touch with your audience and keep them engaged. I'm Jason, growth specialist at Wildmail, where we help make active campaign even better for Europe based businesses. Let's check it out. So before we dive into how to send an active campaign newsletter, let's talk about why you need one in the first place. Now, a newsletter is important to stay in touch with your audience, continue the relationship, uh, continue having them engage with your brand and keep them updated after they've gone through your initial onboarding or nurture sequences. And this can be done at different intervals, sometimes monthly, sometimes weekly. Uh, and some people send out newsletters, you know, more than once a week. It really depends on your business and your strategy, but the more often uh, your audience is used to engaging with you, the more likely they are to open an email later on when you have something to offer them and to provide them uh, with value. So it's important to get a newsletter set up. In this video, I'm going to show you two ways that you can set this up and send out newsletters. So the first way is by setting up manual campaigns. And I say manual in quotation marks because you can actually still schedule these out. This is what we do, and I'll show you how we go about sending out our newsletters. So first, they can still be batch created and scheduled, as I mentioned. Uh, the pros are that it allows for real time updates and changes, and it's great for newsletters, product updates and flash sales. So if this information is something you want to share with your audience, uh, you know, you're going to be able to do this with manual campaigns that you create on a weekly or biweekly basis. The cons are that it can take a bit more time as they're a bit more manual uh, versus automated, and there's no real access to past emails. Uh, unless you kind of create a space for those emails to live on, uh, if it makes sense to, if the content is a bit evergreen, maybe you have a gated blog or something that stores all of those emails from the past because someone isn't opting into an evergreen drip sequence that is going to send out these, these newsletters. They're going to just be receiving uh, the emails from the point that they've subscribed to your list and to the newsletter itself. Now, in order to set this up, we're going to go to campaigns and create a campaign inside of our active campaign account. So you can see this here, which is set up with our reseller account through Wildmail. On the left, I'm gonna to go to campaigns. I'm going to go to create a campaign in the top right. You can actually see our newsletters here and create a campaign. We can title it something like newsletter example. And here's something important to note. Uh, we typically use just the standard regular one-time email campaign option here. The other option that you may want to choose for a newsletter is split testing, uh, where you can compare multiple emails, the subject lines, uh, the sender, the copy to test which one is working best. However, for our case right here, we're just going to show you the standard option. Hit next. <laughs> choose the list that you want this to go out to. For our example, I'll show you how we send ours. We choose the main list. Uh, that we're sending that email to, whether it's the English or Spanish. And then this segment is a newsletter. These are people that have opted into the newsletter and have not opted out. So we're going to choose that. Hit next. Here is where we are going to design our newsletter. You can check out this video here for a more in-depth guide as to how to use the email builder. Uh, but you have the new email designer and you have the classic designer. At the time of filming this video, uh, conditional content only works in the classic designer if you're planning on using that. Uh, but for our case, let's just use the new email designer and hit continue. And then here there are tons of templates that you can use. You can also use past campaigns. This is going to be super helpful if you are sending out a newsletter with the same template, the same design. You can just choose your past newsletter. As soon as you've created the first one, you'll have that as an option to select for your future newsletters. So I'll go to designed templates and I can actually search here in newsletters. And there are some different options here. You've got app newsletter, fashion, etc. You can also start from scratch if you want or go to basic templates. And I can search for weekly newsletter here. OK, so we'll just select this one. Choose your sender. Subject line will just say NL number one. You can always adjust this later. And we're going to hit continue. So here's an important point that Active Campaign actually helps out uh, by making here in the placeholder copy. Give them the highlights, don't give them everything. The newsletter is a great way to keep your brand warm and on your customers' minds. 
uh, lay out a few key highlights in each week's update. We use bullet points in ours, we use sections, and we don't really write long paragraphs or books uh, inside of the newsletter. We're gonna send them to our content on our blog, on our YouTube channel. We get the full version of the information that we just wanna give them a preview of here in the newsletter and then you know get them to um, begin our social, our YouTube videos, or our blog. So that is a great point by Active Campaign, and I'll actually show you at the end of this video an example of our newsletter so you can see how we have it structured. So I'll leave this for now. You're gonna to want to customize this. Hit next. It'll show you your summary. You can add a preheader text if you want. Make sure that it passes the spam check. And then here is where you can schedule it. So technically you could still batch create your newsletters if you wanted. If you have, let's say the, the next month's newsletters, then you could schedule those out right here one by one. You just have to be designing and creating them separately. Uh, there's a duplicate function, which I can show you. You can also hit send now. I'm going to show you how to duplicate your campaigns in case you decide to do it this way manually. So I'm going to hit save and exit. And that brings us back into our campaigns. And then over here in the right, we can choose duplicate. You can also save it as a template. And then you can adjust the copy, schedule it for the next week. Uh, it really depends again on your schedule, your content schedule, or how often you have updates, how relevant what's happening this week with your brand is next week and the following week. Uh, if you're able to plan out an entire month's or two months worth of content for your newsletters, awesome. Uh, and I'll show you in the next step here an evergreen way to build this out if that's the case. Uh, otherwise, you can schedule it like this. Um, you know, if you're working on a month to month basis or less, you might want to just do it manually like we do. We have constant updates every week. Uh, and so it makes sense for us to make those adjustments and then schedule these out weekly for our audience. So now I'm going to show you how you can automate sending out a newsletter using Active Campaign automations. And if we click into our evergreen newsletter automation here, the pros of this are you can set it and forget it. Uh, you'll be able to provide access to previous email content by running people through a drip sequence that can start from the first newsletter. Uh, again, this has to be evergreen. It has to be relevant. Uh, you can't have emails out of order. So this is something you really want to think about and plan with your content strategy uh, because it will run on autopilot. Um, it should save you time. But again, it, it will work uh, only if it's not dependent on specific dates um, or very, very recent updates that you want to be able to share with your audience. Um, cons, as I mentioned, doesn't allow for timely adjustments uh, or for recent updates. It's best for newsletter content that will remain relevant for a longer period of time. So to set this up, we're going to go to automations and create an automation inside Active Campaign. I'm going to go to create an automation. And here we're going to use a recipe. If you're not sure what Active Campaign recipes are, you can check out this video right here to learn more about that. But we're going to go to search and we're going to search for a newsletter. I'm going to choose the weekly newsletter, hit continue. And from here, the automation setup wizard will help you get started. So you can go ahead and hit get started. Typically, we're going to trigger this when someone receives the tag to receive our newsletter. Uh, that way we can adjust uh, people who are on our main list overall, but have subscribed or unsubscribed from the newsletter specifically. OK, we want to do all of our segmentation by tags. Uh, but for this example, I'll just choose main list. And let me just walk you through how this automation works now. You can see we have a series of goals followed by send email steps. In each goal, you'll see this here. Feel free to customize these dates. These are just examples. So if I click into the goal, you'll see it says the current month of the company is August and current day of the month of the company is greater than or equal to five. And the current time of the company is greater than or equal to 10 a.m. We're only going to use this goal for when it's below the contacts position in the automation. And then if the contact does not meet the goal conditions, we're going to wait until the conditions are met. OK, we're not going to continue anyways. Hit save. And what this is going to do is if, for example, it is the fifth of the month or after, we're going to send email one for the first week. However, let's take a look at the second goal here. This says if it's August and it is the 12th or greater, then we're going to send this second email for week two. So that means if this is true, if these conditions are met for this goal, they're actually going to get pulled down. They're going to skip this first newsletter, jump down here, and we'll send our second week's newsletter. 
So once we arrive, we've got one email per week. This is pretty typical of a newsletter that a company would send out, but you can adjust this based on your own content strategy. And then at the end, you'll see this note here, instead of ending the automation, you can make this a start and automation and then have it lead into next month's newsletter automation. Okay, so if you get out and go back into automations, over on the right here, we can actually hit copy. It'll create a copy of the weekly newsletter automation. And then all you have to do is adjust the dates in that automation for the following month. And this is how you can batch create your content for a month and continue uh, adding on for the following month and the following month. This is also possible with, with another evergreen newsletter automation. And here's that automation here for the evergreen newsletter. It's another way to build it out. And as you'll see, you can continue extending this. We've got 50 in here, so you could create batch, create 50 emails, and then you're going to have a wait block here so that everyone gets dropped after they've reached the 50th email, they'll get dropped into this wait for 100 years. Uh, and that gives you time to continue creating emails. So they'll just pause here in this wait block and you can then create your next batch of emails and then push them through this wait block. So if I go back up to the top, you'll see we start with a send email welcome block. And I'm going to go ahead and create this for you from scratch so you can see how to do it step by step. So back into a fresh automation here, we're going to add a start trigger. Typically, we'll do it when someone has a tag added. You may also be doing it when they subscribe to one of your lists. We have one main list and we segment by tags. So I'll choose tag is added and I'll search for newsletter just as an example. Have it run once and hit add start. And then for the first block, we're going to send that welcome email. So we'll call this welcome. You can start with a past campaign if you already have a campaign design that you like for newsletters. Uh, or you can start with one of the templates that we mentioned earlier when we were designing campaigns. They have plenty for weekly newsletters that you can select. I'm going to choose save and design later. And then in our next step, we're going to wait until the current day of the week is Monday and the current time is 10 a.m. for the contact. And then for the next step, we're going to go to conditions and workflow and wait, wait for a specified period of time. And this is the time between when you send out the first welcome email and your first newsletter. So we can say here for one day and hit save. And then we can go back and add another wait block in conditions and workflow. So it would be the current day of the contact is, let's say, Monday. If we wanted to send this out on Monday. And the current time for the contact is 10 AM. And from here, we're going to hit plus, and it's time to send out our first newsletter. So we can say NL1, again, design this email here. I'll hit save and design later. If you are looking for ideas, you can check out the daily Seinfeld email sequence from ClickFunnels uh, just for some ideas. And this is going to help you design emails for an evergreen newsletter that run off of an episode style, educational style, and epiphany style. These are the different types of content you can create in each one. You want to make sure that you avoid talking about uh, recent events, um, weather, dates, holidays, etc just so that it can always run evergreen. It, you don't want to be talking about things that are time or date dependent, uh, and this can give you a good idea here. So just go ahead and Google that if you're looking for uh, topics and content that you can include in your newsletter. So we've got our first newsletter. And if I go back here, sending out the first newsletter, I'm going to wait for another time period until this is uh, 10 a.m. on Monday. And the reason that we do that is because if I were to, let's say, uh, create another wait block just for Monday at 10 a.m. They would all send at once because the condition would be met that it was Monday at 10 a.m. So that's why we have to add this additional block for a wait period. So what I'll do is I'll say plus conditions and workflow, wait, wait for a specific period of time. I could say wait for one day, hit save, hit plus. wait until specific conditions are met. And you can do it manually like this. And again, choose the current day and current time or what you can do. I'll just delete that. 
You can go back up here to this block. Drag it down, copy single action. We don't have any context. You can choose what to do if you're editing this and there are contacts already in your automation. Hit OK. And now you can see we've got uh, the same wait time. And we can do the same with the email. Drag that down, copy single action, hit OK. And then when you click in, this would be NL2. And we can continue doing this, copy single action. Just to give you an idea. And then we've got email three of the Evergreen newsletter. When you get to the end, remember to add the wait for a specific period of time block for 100 years. And this is what will give you time to continue extending this Evergreen newsletter sequence for as long as you'd like. Uh, anyone, when they arrive to the end, they'll wait for 100 years, and then you can continue adding on uh, additional emails. And one thing we'll mention in the beginning, if someone has already opted in, uh, you may not want to send them another welcome email. So what you can do is at the beginning, before that initial welcome email, you can choose conditions and workflow, if else. And you can say contact has been sent or has opened. We can say has opened. Any email, hit save. And we're going to drag from send the welcome email over to the right. We're going to move this action and all following actions. You can choose what to do with any current contacts in your automation. And then if they have opened the email, we can click the plus conditions and workflow and use the go to step. And we'll just drag this down to wait until the current day of the week is Monday and start them off with the first newsletter. And this might be because they've already been sent, you know, a different welcome email. They've already opted into a lead magnet. We don't need to welcome them again necessarily to uh, this sequence. You can also choose instead of has opened any email, you can select a specific campaign in case you have other welcome emails that you've already sent out and you want to be uh, sure that it's a welcome email that they've received, you can do that as well and choose specific lead magnet delivery campaigns, anything else that might have already welcomed them. Um, and then that way, you can just subscribe them directly to the newsletter and get them started on the Evergreen newsletter without uh, sending an additional email on top of some other email that they may have received from a different opt-in point. So if you have any questions around this, feel free to drop them in the comments below. We'd be happy to help you get this set up.